Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to talk about the new enzyme scrub from Huda Beauty's skincare line called Wishful. I'm going to give you some thoughts that I have on the ingredients in this product that I think will be helpful for you if you're trying to decide whether you should spend your money to buy this product or not. I will give the same disclaimer as I do in many of my before you buy type of videos. This is not a review video. I did not purchase this product for myself. I have not tested it on myself. And most of the time there are good reasons why I do not want to test it on my own skin, which is what we'll get into in just a second. So if you are here to hear my thoughts on how it worked on my skin after testing it out, this is not the video for you. But if you are here to get some kind of warnings or just helpful information about this product before you make the decision to spend your own money, this is the video for you. So make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting that red subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Follow Allure Beauty on Instagram. And of course, if you didn't see the latest video, I will link that in the upper right hand corner for you to see. That was February's What's New in Beauty video where I showed you a bunch of new beauty and skincare products on the market. And there are a lot of very funky and interesting things this month. So if that long form type of video is something that interests you, then make sure you go check that out. All right, let's get talking about Wishful Beauty's new enzyme scrub. All right, so first, just a little bit of background. Wishful is Huda Beauty's new skincare brand. And if you go to someplace like Sephora, then it will show up as its own brand. As always, I will link in the description box below to where you can purchase this product if that is something that you do want to do after watching this video. And I will put a link to Rakuten, which is a cash back system. So whether you're purchasing this product or any other product online, you can get some cash back if you're not already signed up for that kind of program. So Wishful is listed as a cruelty-free brand, which is great. It's also touted as being a clean brand. I will not go into my whole thing about how clean really doesn't mean anything. If you want more information on that and my opinion on that, then I'll link in the upper right hand corner the video that I did for Bite Beauty's Micellar Foundation. And I go into all of the reasons why clean is an empty word, but basically it doesn't mean anything. It's a very arbitrary phrase. It's used as a marketing tool to get companies to get you to spend more money on something that you might think is more safe or better for your skin. When most of the time a clean product has lots of damaging ingredients in it and there's nothing that is better for your skin in them than a product that is not listed as clean. So the full name of this product by Wishful is the Yo Glow Facial Enzyme Scrub, and it retails for $39. For that $39, you receive 3.38 ounces or 100 milliliters of product. And as I mentioned, this product is available through Sephora, or you can buy it through Huda Beauty's website directly. So let's look at what the claims are for this product. From the description, it says that it is a gentle yet powerful exfoliator infused with pineapple and papaya enzymes, BHAs and AHAs that leaves skin with a healthy glow. So if we break that down, it is called in the name a scrub. So it's something that you're supposed to be manually working over and into the skin. But basically the function of it is supposed to be as an exfoliator. Now there are two kinds of exfoliators. There are manual exfoliators, which are by this day and age, a little more old school and I would say more old outdated technology. And there are chemical exfoliators that use chemicals to actually um, slough off the dead and upper layers of skin to reveal more radiant, healthy, younger looking, smoother looking, hopefully skin underneath. Now, if you look at the ingredients, you can tell that this is supposed to be a chemical exfoliator. So even though it's called a scrub, it's not going to be something that has those like beads in it or those really harsh walnut shell particles that a lot of more old school um, exfoliators used to have, which is a good thing. It's more effective usually to have something that is a chemical exfoliator as opposed to a physical exfoliator. And in general, you tend to avoid the risks of making uh, tears on your skin and micro tearing, things like that, the way that you would have with a physical exfoliator. Not that all physical exfoliation is bad. There are plenty of safe and gentle physical exfoliators on the market, 
but there are also still lots of um, frankly dangerous and damaging ones on the market too. So if you ever see a scrub or exfoliator that has walnut shell particles in it, avoid it, don't buy it, don't rub it into your skin. All right, going back to the claims, got a little off track there. So this is basically, it sounds like going to be a chemical exfoliator. Um, the way that we know that is, A, once we get to look at the ingredients, I don't see any sort of um, manual particles that are used to scrub the skin. But B, we can see that there are a couple enzymes listed, specifically pineapple and papaya enzymes and BHAs, beta hydroxy acid, and AHAs, alpha hydroxy acids. And all of these things are supposed to give you that healthy glow at the end of the day. BHAs and AHAs have a ton of scientific uh, studies backing about how they are good for the skin. BHAs tend to be something that people use more for things like acne, but definitely contribute to the more smooth uh, looking nature of the skin. AHA is similarly not so much good for acne, but very good for um, addressing things like pigmentation and giving you that radiance by chemically exfoliating the upper de dead duller layers of skin on the top. So in terms of the claims, it looks like we're starting off on a really good foot with ingredients that actually have a lot of backing and evidence to support their effectiveness for giving you that more healthy glow. But of course, companies claim things all the time without actually backing up or giving you a product that lives up to those claims. So we need to not just look at what a company tells you or claims their product will do. We have to look at the actual ingredients in the skincare item. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's start with the things that are good. We do have that pineapple fruit extract. We also have the bromelain and we have papaya extract, citric acid, lactic acid, malic acid, salicylic acid, and glycolic acid all fairly early on in the ingredients list. And those are all great. Um, I think papaya fruit extract is maybe not as great as the pineapple fruit extract, which has been shown to have that nice um, exfoliating effect. Similarly, all those acids that we listed help contribute to that radiance and skin soothing and smoothing effect. As we continue to go down the ingredients list, we have more good ingredients. For example, things like coconut fruit extract, sweet almond oil, ginger root extract, willow bark extract, sugar maple extract, camellia leaf extract, all these various things help to smooth out the skin, nourish the skin, and act as emollients for the skin. And even further along, we have several fruit extracts and some tea leaf extracts, things that act as antioxidants. Some of these are not really that potent when it comes to the antioxidant power, um, but they're certainly not damaging for the skin. So there are definitely a good number of ingredients that are good for your skin, but there are also a good number of ingredients that are damaging to the skin. The very first thing that we encounter when it comes to bad ingredients is alcohol. And there's a good amount of it in the product because if you look, it is the fifth ingredient listed. Alcohol is damaging to the skin barrier. Um, it's also very drying, especially if you have sensitive skin. It's not a good ingredient for any type of skin, but especially if you have sensitive, more acne prone skin, it definitely has an increased chance of irritation, of creating more dryness, creating more breakouts. So it's not an ingredient that you want to be slathering all over your face. Um, now at this point, I want to note that there is a difference, a slight difference between something that's on your face temporarily versus let's say a moisturizer where you plan to wear that for hours and hours throughout the day. So usually when I talk about things like cleansers, personally, I'm much more lenient in terms of allowing bad ingredients or tolerating bad ingredients in a cleanser because I know it's in contact with my skin for just a handful of seconds before I wash it away and it's no longer on my skin. But for something like a scrub, where even in the directions for this product, it tells you that you should use it by massaging it in circular motions across the face and the neck, rolling and sweeping away dead, dead skin cells and, and impurities, this is the type of product that people will tend to leave on the skin for longer than just their normal cleanser. So there is still that increased chance of having the volatile or damaging ingredients have noticeable damage to your skin either immediately or over time. 
And when it specifically comes to alcohol, it doesn't take a lot of time for alcohol to have that damaging effect on the skin. It's pretty immediate. So even in something that is only in contact with your skin for you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds, you're gonna get that negative effect on the skin with a product like this. So that is the biggest negative about this product. But that's not all. As we continue to go down the ingredients list, we have a fragrant or volatile irritating ingredients. For example, we have rose flower extract. It's highly fragrant and fragrance is never something that is beneficial to the skin. It just isn't. There are people who argue with me in every video I do where they're like, oh, fragrance is nothing. It doesn't irritate my skin. Well, it's an irritant that works over time. It doesn't have just immediate effects it harms the skin and irritates the skin in the long run also. So if you don't want to, if you don't care about the risks or the effects, um, then that's a personal choice, but that doesn't mean that the ingredient is good for your skin. Another volatile fragrant ingredient we have is the grapefruit seed extract. And then more towards the end of the ingredients list, so in smaller quantities, you again have the volatile irritating, irritating ingredients listed as orange fruit extract and lemon fruit extract. And then the very last ingredient is fragrance or perfume. Now, that's a term that companies just get to use. You don't actually know what's in that ingredient that's listed as fragrance or perfume. But in any case, like I said before, fragrance is not skincare. It is never something that is going to give your skin something beneficial. Luckily, it is listed at the very end. It's the very last ingredient. So there's a small amount. But in addition to the fragrance, you also have other things that are basically fragrance or fragrant ingredients. Like I said already, the rose flower extract, the grapefruit, orange, and lemon extracts too. And while things like lemon and orange fruit extracts can be harmful to the skin all on their own, it's particularly dangerous or risky when you're combining those with things like glycolic acid and other acids because those ingredients, things that are citrus based, not things like citric acid, that's its own thing, but things like orange fruit extract, lemon fruit extract, especially when you see something like lemon peel oil, lime oil, you absolutely do not want to be putting those things all over your skin. They are photosensitizing. So especially if you are then combining them with the um, other acids that are breaking down the upper layer of your skin, and you're going outside, having sun exposure, even with sunscreen, um, those things that are combining not only with the good acids, but then are also photosensitizing, you definitely do not want to expose your skin in that way to damaging sun rays. So would I personally spend almost $40 on a product like this? No, because I don't want to buy a product where I do get some good skin ingredients, but then I get several quite harmful ingredients in the mix. I may as well spend my money on something that doesn't pose the risks and damage to my skin that this product does. So you might be thinking, well, I want something that exfoliates my skin or is a scrub, and I'm particularly interested in something that is enzyme-based. So I did a lot of research to look at what alternatives you could get to this scrub from Wishful that are A, um, cheaper, so I picked out some products that have similar risks and problems to the Wishful product, but at the very least they're cheaper. So if you're gonna take the chance of damaging your skin that way, you may as well spend less money. Doesn't necessarily mean that I would actually recommend these um, standing alone. And in addition, I do have a list of things that are maybe not cheaper, some of them are, um, but at the very least have just tons of good skincare ingredients and do not contain the negative, bad, risky, damaging, harmful ingredients that the Wishful product does. So let's start with the first category of alternatives, which is, hey, look, maybe you don't care as much about the risks associated with things like fragrant plant oils or alcohol, um, but if you're gonna take that risk, then I encourage you to consider these alternatives because then at the very least, you're not spending as much money. So there are three products in this category. All of them are cheaper per ounce than the Wishful Enzyme Scrub. 
Um, but of those three, I'll start with the most expensive, which is a product from Alpine Beauty. And this is their Plant Genius Creamy Bubbling Cleanser with fruit enzymes and AHAs. And this product retails for $36, so immediately cheaper, but also gives you more product, which is four ounces or 118 milliliters. So a little bit more product and also cheaper means overall it is definitely cheaper per ounce. Now, again, this product does have some problematic ingredients, um, just like the Wishful product does, but it's cheaper overall and it has um, fewer of the problematic ingredients. So for example, it does contain alcohol, but it is the very last ingredient listed, meaning it has a relatively small, uh, quite small amount of it in the product. It has great ingredients, for example, pomegranate fruit extract, some amino acids, papaya fruit extract, just like the Wishful product does. It has the glycolic acid, lactic acid, ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, linoleic acid, jojoba seed oil, small amount of ceramides, and I forgot the very second ingredient is glycerin, so nice and hydrating. Now, there are problematic things. For example, there's a good amount of witch hazel in this product. I know a lot of people like witch hazel. Sometimes people use it just pure witch hazel as a toner, which I don't recommend. Um, not the most problematic ingredient out there, but definitely not something that I would want to leave on my skin for a long time in a high concentration. In addition, um, after kind of the halfway point of the ingredients list, there are things like lavender oil, orange oil. Um, so these are things, again, that are fragrant and volatile that are not something ideally that would be in a product. But you can see overall that the um, amount or strength or concentration of bad ingredients in this product is a lot less than the concentration of bad ingredients in the Wishful product. So I think overall, this is definitely a superior alternative to the Wishful product. The second alternative is infinitely cheaper, although still not the cheapest of the three alternatives that I have. And that is a product by Alba Botanica. It is their Hawaiian Facial Scrub Pore Purifying Pineapple enzyme. And the price for this will vary depending on where you purchase this because it's a pseudo drugstore product, but somewhere around $14 for four ounces. Now this product not only has the chemical exfoliating properties, but it also has physical exfoliating properties. The second ingredient is jojoba esters. So those kind of soft, very small round um, particles that help to manually exfoliate the skin. In addition, it has jojoba seed oil, aloe leaf juice, pineapple fruit extract, papaya fruit, ginger root extract, bromelain, citric acid, glycerin. So for the majority of the ingredients in this product, you're getting really good things. Now, as we start to get toward the tail end of the ingredients list, we again do have alcohol in the product. And the very last two ingredients are limonene and fragrance. Both of those are fragrant, irritating ingredients. But overall, once again, we only have kind of a handful or a few uh, problematic ingredients in this product and they are towards the end of the ingredients list. So the quantity of those bad ingredients um, is relatively small. The last alternative in this category is from Bliss, and that is their Jelly Glow Peel Gentle Non-Abrasive Exfoliant with Fruit Enzymes. This will retail for $12, and gives you four fluid ounces. And similar to the Alba product, this has both chemical exfoliants in it and has a physical or manual exfoliating aspect to it. And if we go to the ingredients list, starting off with the good ingredients, the second ingredient is glycerin. You also get a good amount of niacinamide in here. You have coconut fruit extract, again, bromelain, you even get things like lactobacillus ferment, which helps to soothe the skin and some citric acid. Once again, as we get to the tail end of the ingredients, we have some problematic ingredients like lavender oil, sage oil, um, flower fragrant floral oils, and linalool. 
Similar to the Alba product, we have a majority of good ingredients, but you still have a handful of problematic ones in smaller quantities. The manual exfoliating property of this product comes from little cellulose beads. The last thing I'm going to do in this video is to recommend several products that are fantastic for giving you a radiant glow for exfoliating that top layer of dead skin cells, but that don't necessarily fall into this category of type of product of an enzyme scrub. So if at the end of the day, what you care about is not the way that the product looks or what package it comes in, but getting the end result of having that healthy glow, I think there are a lot of better alternatives out on the market. Um, and you can just forget this enzyme glow scrub thing and focus on products that will give you the end result of that healthy glow. And the way you're going to really get that is by concentrating mainly on the AHA or glycolic acid aspect. That really is the hero ingredient with a lot of scientific backing. Um, the BHA also will help too. So if you can get something that's a combination, that's a bonus, but I think really the AHA is the main focus. So a product that I have mentioned many times on my channel, it is one of my holy grail all time favorite products. If I had to whittle down the dozens of skincare products that I had to just a handful, this would be one of them. It is from Paula's Choice. It is the Resist Weekly Resurfacing Solution. It has 10% alpha hydroxy acid. It is in a liquid form, so I apply it just like a toner. You can put it on for 10, 20 minutes and then rinse it off if you wanted to. I leave it on overnight. It is one of the few products that I see overnight results with. Uh, most skincare you have to use for many weeks to months to see gradual effects. This is a product that I see results very quickly with. And as with all Paul's Choices products, they are not one note. So in addition to that AHA of 10%, you get a ton of other good skincare ingredients and the company never includes fragrance or fragrant plant oils um, or essential oils. They never include the drying alcohol ingredient. So in addition to the AHA, you're going to get things like antioxidants, other hydrators, and just things that are soothing to the skin. This resurfacing solution costs $36 and you get two fluid ounces. So more expensive than the scrub, absolutely, uh, but also infinitely better in terms of whether it's good for your skin. The second product that I think is really good is again from Paula's Choice. It is from the Resist line. It is the daily smoothing treatment with 5% AHA. So the dosage you're getting is half that in the treatment um, that I just listed as the first recommendation. Now this product retails for $33 and you get 1.7 fluid ounces. Now this one is not so much a treatment, but is a more well-rounded skincare product, like a moisturizer that you would use in your daily routine. Um, it has a kind of lightweight lotiony texture. And in addition to the AHA, it contains a lot of other anti-aging skincare care ingredients. In addition to the AHA, it also contains salicylic acid. So you're not just getting the AHA, but you're also getting a dose of BHA. So if you're looking for something that has both those ingredients, this is a great choice for you. The third product that I would recommend is from Drunk Elephant. Now this one is the most expensive, so I can totally understand if you don't wanna spend the money on it, but if you do have the money or you can get it on sale, this is a fantastic product. It is the TLC Frambuse Glycolic Night Serum, and this retails for a whopping $90 for just one ounce. So I know, I know, uh, but again, if you ignore the price, this contains fantastic ingredients in here. You again get a mixture of not only that glycolic acid or HA, but you also get BHA or salicylic acid in addition to a bunch of antioxidants and skin soothing ingredients. This has more of like a lightweight gel texture. So if you're someone who is oily combination and you want that kind of texture that doesn't leave behind 
uh, shine or isn't heavy, this is a good product. I know it's called a serum, but it's not your traditional serum that you may be thinking in your head that's kind of more oily or greasy. Oh, and there's 12% glycolic acid in this, so even more than the Paula's Choice 10% treatment that I mentioned first. And the fourth and last product that I would recommend is from The Inky List, and this one is definitely the most affordable of everything. It is also a product that I absolutely love. I think I listed it as one of my best skincare items in 2019, but if I didn't, um, it's definitely going to be one for 2020. It is the PHA toner. This retails for $10.99 and you get 3.4 fluid ounces. So absolutely an affordable product. What's really nice about this product is that it contains that PHA, which is kind of similar to AHAs or BHAs in giving you that exfoliating property and effect, but it's shown to be a lot more gentle than AHA. So if you're someone who has tried using glycolic acids in the past and you're skin is just super sensitive and it can't tolerate that, then this is a wonderful alternative to try and I really encourage you to try PHAs instead. PHA stands for polyhydroxy acid. It is also a chemical exfoliant, but it doesn't have the um, strength in terms of how deeply it penetrates the skin the way AHA does, which is why it is more suitable for people with more sensitive skin. There's a concentration of 3% PHA in this product at a suitable pH to be effective at exfoliating your skin. But that's not all. You also get a good amount of niacinamide in this product. You get soothing aloe leaf juice. You get a little bit of citric acid. So the Inky List products tend to be more one note. Um, and this certainly is not a product that is a skincare powerhouse the way most of Paul's Choices products are and frankly the way that most of Drunk Elephant's products are. But given that super affordable price and the addition of a couple other really good skincare ingredients, um, this is definitely a great product to check out. All right, I hope this video was helpful to you. Maybe it saved you a bit of money that you might've been spending that otherwise you may not wanna spend. And in addition, I hope that I gave you some great alternatives that you could try out, or at the very least, some cheaper alternatives um, if you're going to want to stay in the box of an enzyme scrub. Please feel free to share any thoughts or comments in the comment section below, as always. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. As always, I thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.